After several beta tests, the public release for HoYoVerse's Genshin Impact follow-up, Honkai Star Rail, is finally here. Packed to the gills with new systems, characters, and confusing terminology, it's sure to throw newcomers for a hyperloop. So we're here to help with our handy beginner's guide. We'll go over gameplay systems to start, and then later we'll cover warping, the new but familiar mechanic for pulling new characters and stat boosting items. Since switching to turn-based combat from the action RPG style of Genshin Impact is one of the biggest changes that Honkai Star Rail makes to the HoYoVerse formula, we'll start there with six tips. You won't get very far without paying attention to enemy weaknesses. Depleting an enemy's toughness, the white bar above their health, by hitting with one of the corresponding element types will trigger adverse elemental effects, a damage boost, and various debuffs. It will also delay their turn for a time or keep them from firing off a powerful attack they're targeting a character with. Each combat type will break enemies who have that weakness, and each break has a different effect. Although for four of the types, physical, fire, lightning, and wind, they boil down to different types of damage over time with the status effects bleed, burn, shock, and shear respectively. The ones with special effects are ice, quantum, and imaginary. Ice freezes enemies, imagine that immobilizes them and does additional ice damage. Quantum applies the entanglement effect, which delays enemy actions, deals damage at the start of the next turn, and the start of turn recurring damage increases when the enemy is hit. Imaginary damage, which actually does damage despite the name, delays enemy actions and also reduces enemy speed. Pay attention to not just combat types, but combat paths as well. Combat types tell you the element of the character, and combat paths are the character archetypes. Think of paths like classes, with high variability between characters. Paths can be broken down into two categories, damage dealers and support. Three paths can be considered primarily damage dealers, destruction, the hunt, and erudition. The other four are various types of support, harmony, nihility, preservation, and abundance. Destruction is your all-rounder, and the path of your main character. Destruction characters boast both good damage and survivability. The hunt characters, like Don Hung, deal primarily high single-target damage, and erudition characters, like Serval, focus on multi-target AoE damage. Turn up the volume. Next is the four support type paths. Harmony characters like Asta provide offensive buffs for allies. Oh, profound secret to the stars! Give these trailblazers your blessing! Nihility characters like Silverwolf focus on debuffing enemy characters. Preservation characters like March 7th, yes that is her real name, rely on defensive buffs for allies like her very handy shield, the power of cuteness. Yes, that is also the real name. And abundance characters like Natasha are healers. Think nothing of it. Thanks a lot. Quick note, don't underestimate the power of cuteness both in the game and real life. But in the game, use it a lot. Seriously. Stay right there while I give you a present! Let's go. Humanity never conceals its desire to control the heavens. And I'm no exception. Don't use your ultimates immediately. Use them strategically, paying attention to weakness and how disruptive you can be. From buffing your characters, to debuffing enemies, or even just doing a ton of damage, there's a wide range of ultimates for every occasion. They also interrupt turn order for all you Zenosaga or Trails fans out there, so keep an eye on the order in the top left, and look to interrupt and weakness break an enemy before they launch an attack. If you're using a controller, you can pause the game and observe the battlefield at any time by holding down the right trigger, but no matter which control scheme, you can queue up ultimates at any time. That means you can wait till the very end of someone's turn to see where everyone's health and toughness bars currently are, and activate or save an ultimate at the last second. Keep in mind that once the camera cuts back to an enemy though, even if they are recovering from something like freeze or a weakness break, it's already their turn. So don't wait too long or you won't be able to interrupt anymore. The truth of life and death. Light cones are unlockable cards that improve your stats, and early on will be a big source of your character's strength. These light cones can be equipped on anyone regardless of character path, but should really only be used if they match the path of that character, as they'll give special effects. 
You can level these light cones up by feeding them resources, or increase their tiers and base effects by feeding them other copies of the same light cones. While they're not as flashy as the characters themselves, make sure you don't neglect your light cones, as they make a major difference to your combat effectiveness. One of the benefits of switching away from action-oriented combat is that you can take as much time as you need in between turns. There's also a ton of information you can glean during combat by opening up the character and enemy menus to look at stats, skills, current buffs and debuffs, and more. The info is all there for you to use, so don't act carelessly. There are often many ways out of a difficult situation if you just slow down and look around. One of the currencies that recharges every day is your Trailblaze power, which you can spend to do optional battles to gain extra resources. You can teleport to these battles by using the Inter-Astral Peace Guide, yes, again, that's the real name, or simply walk up to the Calyxes from which they spawn. If you're looking for something to do to progress in the game but don't feel like playing the story, this is a great option since your Trailblaze power will refill anyway. Use it or lose it. An unfortunate reality when playing free-to-play gacha games is the, often intentionally, confusing and overwhelming currency and character pull systems. In Honkai Star Rail, they're called warps. And while some of these currencies can be used for things other than pulling on banners to receive new characters, we're going to focus just on how these new currencies can be used for the warp system so this video won't be an hour long. Warps can be activated with Star Rail passes and Star Rail special passes. While you'll receive a lot of these passes by receiving in-game rewards, you can also buy them using currencies called Undying Starlight, Undying Embers, and Stellar Jade. The first two, Undying Starlight and Embers, you receive through warps, as you can see on the right side of the screen. You can also receive Stellar Jade as an in-game reward, or you can buy it through the game's premium currency, Oniric Shards. As we've reached the bottom of the pyramid, Oniric Shards are obtained in only one way, spending money. So to sum up the currencies for the warp system, the two types of rail passes let you use the warp system to try and pull characters or light cones. Through warping, you'll receive Undying Starlight and Embers, which you can use to buy more passes. Additional passes can be received in-game or by spending Stellar Jade, another in-game reward. Stellar Jade can also be purchased by trading in premium currency called Oniric Shards that you pay real money for. If this is all very confusing, don't worry. It only means you're still sane. A handy in-game detail is that when you click on a resource in your inventory, it will often tell you how you received it. Make sure to double check that you're pulling on the right banner and using the correct resource to do so before you blow through your rail passes. Pulling on the starter banner called Departure Warp guarantees you a 5-star drop within the first 50 pulls. So you could start there to grab a useful character or jump directly to a character or special event banner if you want to try your luck. Keep in mind that pulling on Departure Warp if you do 10 at a time, it only takes 8 passes instead of 10, so you'll be saving a few by doing that, at least until you pull your 5-star character. Honkai Star Rail is a game of systems on top of systems, and there is always something new to learn. But we'll stop there for today because sometimes you just gotta go play. We hope you enjoyed this beginner's guide, and while you're here, make sure to check out the first 20 minutes of gameplay. For everything else gaming, you're already on the right space train. IGN.